Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church. At this time, we ask you to please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, who raised Jesus from the dead, be always with you. And with your spirit. In baptism, our sister Elizabeth died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with Christ eternal glory. Elizabeth cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. Lord Jesus Christ, you loved us unto death. Let this cross be a sign of your love for Elizabeth and for the people you have gathered here today. Tea. 
We come together this morning, brothers and sisters in the church, in sorrow, but in hope. In sorrow at the death of our sister, Elizabeth Oliva. And on behalf of this parish family, I offer to you, the members of her family, our deepest sympathies, especially to Lynn and Vince, to Christina, to Victoria and Joseph, to the other members of her family, our deepest sympathies at her passing and the assurances of our prayers for you in the time ahead. We also gather in hope, hope in the promise of eternal life given to Elizabeth at her baptism, a hope that we pray God now fulfills for her by welcoming her into the joys of his kingdom. I ask everyone to please be seated as I invite her brother Joseph to come and offer these words of remembrance. Thank you all for coming. As we reflect on my dear sister Elizabeth, whom we all loved so dearly, I wish from the bottom of my heart that it was I who had been taken. But I'm here with you to mourn and we will move together forward from this day. The last few days have been filled with tears and weeping and much silence as there are no words to offer in this time. But I am here to speak and I hope that I could offer some words of remembrance and some words of encouragement. I don't have time to talk about all the great memories I have with Elizabeth and all the memories we have as a family, but I do want to talk about some of Elizabeth's greatest attributes. And while this is absolutely not exhaustive, I hope this would help us remember her and inspire us to live better. And those attributes are a humble gratitude, an inspiring perseverance, and a profound compassion. Elizabeth was always marked with the humility that led to gratitude for everything that she had. And this was expressed in her words and her actions. Always doing her best to give thanks for all the blessings she was given and to use them. And this is most notably demonstrated in the way in which she honored my father and mother with all that they've given us, every opportunity and blessing, all the hard work that you've poured into our lives and the example that you set for us. And Elizabeth was humbly grateful for all of that knowing that she couldn't do it on her own and she needed others. It's Elizabeth's gratitude that also led her to an inspiring perseverance demonstrated through good times and bad, through success and suffering. Elizabeth had a tenacious work ethic and a resilience through the darkest of moments that inspired us all to act and to go forth and to persist through dark times. And it's Elizabeth's gratitude and her perseverance that leads me to the most important trait of Elizabeth, which is a profound compassion. And it's her gratitude that enabled her 
to give compassion. And it was in the darkest moments of her life that she developed an ability to show compassion. And we all feel the way in which Elizabeth loved us and cared for us and listened to us. So I'd like to share a source of inspiration that was dear to Elizabeth. And that comes in the natural world and the way in which elephants relate to one another. In that when one elephant is ill or sick, in such a circumstance that if they lay down, they might not be able to get up again. The elephants come alongside that elephant and hold that elephant up until it can stand for itself again. The elephants there do for that elephant what it can't do for itself. And Elizabeth lived this type of compassion and love in the way she both saw that she needed to be supported and held up when she was weak, but also in the way in which she sought to carry the burdens of others and to support those who couldn't stand for themselves as well. And it's Elizabeth's profound compassion that will stick with me most in my life and has had the most clear impact on me and will continue to as I go on and develop as a man. Seeing the gentleness and compassion and love that Elizabeth desired and demonstrated will continue to influence the way in which I relate to others as well. But it's Elizabeth's compassion and love and her work ethic that also led to a great burden. For there were times where Elizabeth was not strong enough to keep working hard and she grew tired. And there were times when Elizabeth couldn't bear the burdens of others and she grew weary. And so it's in reflecting on that that I'd like to point you to the one who is greater and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who demonstrates the greatest characteristics of Elizabeth to their perfection. And that's why it's written in the book of Hebrews, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has suffered in every way as we yet is without sin. Let us then draw near to the throne of grace that we might find mercy and help in the time of need. It is because Jesus was both fully man and fully God that his perfect life becomes a substitution for us. For God did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves on the cross. And Jesus is the one who can bear our every burden. So if you feel the burden of death and sin and sorrow, I ask you to consider the love of God which was poured out through Christ that whoever would believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And consider the words that will be spoken and the calling of the Lord upon your heart in this time of deep sorrow. It is Jesus who says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So as we go forth, 
Let us stand together and persevere that we would become a more grateful and compassionate people and family and community. And may we see more clearly the one who provides the sure and steadfast hope, the rock and redeemer who can deliver us in these darkest moments of sorrow and suffering. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, there are no words. So in this silence, Lord, may we look to you for light and truth for hope and redemption that is offered in Christ Jesus. Lord, have mercy on us in this day that we might see you more clearly and have a hope unshakable in the midst of this tragedy. In Christ's name I pray. Thank you, Joe, for those beautiful faith-filled words. Please stand. And as I offer this prayer on behalf of the church, I invite you to offer your own prayers in the quiets of your hearts. Let us pray. O God, who direct our life in all its moments, we humbly entrust to you this, your servant Elizabeth, whom we mourn as one whose life was completed in so short a time. Grant that she may flourish forever young in the happiness of your house. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And I invite Elizabeth's sister Victoria to come and offer our first reading from the Old Testament. This first reading is from Isaiah 55. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread? and your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me here that your soul may live. And I will make with you an everlasting covenant my steadfast, sure love for David. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. 
for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my w- are my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Sister Christina now to come and offer our second reading from the New Testament. This is a reading from Titus chapter 3, verses 3 through 8. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in his in righteousness 
but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is trustworthy, and I want you to insist on these things, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for the people. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew when jesus saw the crowds he went up the mountain and after he sat down his disciples came to him he began to teach them saying blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are they who mourn for they will be comforted Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Just so your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and give glory to your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for a moment. An author once wrote, brothers and sisters, nothing can make up for the absence of someone we love. And it is nonsense to say God fills the gap. God doesn't fill it, but on the contrary keeps it empty and so helps us to keep alive our communion with each other, even at the cost of pain. And we will never come to grips with this loss unless we first admit the enormity of the pain. A pain that neither my words nor even faith itself can take away. In moments like this, when a tragedy like this happens, I think often of a movie, The Passion of the Christ. That controversial movie had an a very moving scene in it, which always stays in my mind. It is the story of the last hours of Jesus. But for me, the most moving scene was an aerial shot, if you remember it, high above the scene below, high above the hill on Calvary, at the moment of Jesus' death. It was as if we, the viewer, were suspended up in the sky, in the heavens, 
and we see a single tear pass before the camera's eye, falling to the earth. And when it hits the earth, there is, as scripture tells us, that tremendous earthquake. In the mind of the producer, this tear is shed from the eye of God at the death of his son. If someone were to ask me this morning, Father, where is your God today? I would answer, that lone teardrop shed from the eye of the grieving heavenly Father that lone teardrop falls for you, for Lynn and Vincent, for Joseph, for Victoria, for Christina, and for all of the members of Elizabeth's family. Washing over you with unimaginable love and compassion, and for all Elizabeth's friends, gathered here this morning to mourn her death. It is shed because death should never have been, not in the plan of God, because pain should never have been, because sickness should never have been. It is shed because the world as God created it and intended it was never meant to be this way. It is shed for your pain and for your loss. It is shed for a wonderful, loving daughter and sister, and for all of the joys she brought to living, not just to you, but to all those who became a part of her life. It is shed for her laughter and joy, for the beautiful smile and the piercing eyes. It is shed for her intelligence and for the, her commitment to the poor and the downtrodden and the struggling and the hurting. It is said for the compassion and humanity which, which she saw life and which she touched by her own compassion. It is said for all the ways by which she made the world a better place. And that gospel reading speaks to us of a vision of God or a vision that God has of the world as a better place where righteousness and mercy and humility reign and not the other way around. She did make the world a better place. As you have found out in the many voices who took time to speak to you or to write on the memory page, I saw these in those pages, a champion of justice and an empathetic soul, a beautiful person inside and outside. We pray her spirit lives on. She has done so much for being so young. It is shed for a life that has left us too soon. Because of this we mourn and are filled with grief. And our faith cannot pretend otherwise we need to grieve her loss. We need to grieve her absence. And the Jesus whom we worship as the Son of God, as the enfleshed God, knows this. Our scripture tells us that whenever Jesus encountered death, he knew the pain and the sorrow of those touched by death. In the Gospel of Mark, he sees the face and the fear on the face of the father who's just been told his little 12-year-old daughter has died. In Luke, he sees the tears of the widow as she buries her only son. In the Gospel of John, Jesus comes to the tomb of his friend Lazarus and he weeps. Jesus knows your pain and the abandonment you feel and he invites you, all of Elizabeth's family and friends, and everyone who mourns, 
to let him share it with you. In that Gospel of Luke, we are told that Jesus was filled with pity for her. It is a word that in its original meaning meant that he wanted to carry the burden for her. And this is what Jesus wants to do for you and with you, to carry the burden of your loss. And Jesus also knows the doubt. That same Gospel of John tells us that some said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so this man would not have died? The pain of loss we feel today is also born not only of grief, but of frustration, doubt, confusion, and even anger. If God is all that he says he is, why has, was he not there? Why did he not send someone to change the course of these events and rescue Elizabeth? I cannot answer that. No one can answer that. No one will ever know until that day comes when each of us crosses over to that next world. So if we cannot go to the place where those questions can be answered, where do we go in this moment? Where is the better place to take this pain and to carry it? You already know that. First, it is to the memory of Elizabeth's life. In your conversations, in the notes and messages left on all the tools of social media, in the number of people who have spoken of her big heart, her compassion, her thirst for righteousness and justice, in those qualities of her life that have been shared over these last days. This is the better place to take this tragedy and to help you carry it. Do not be afraid to keep on doing that, even with the tears that it might bring. Tell her tales, carry her message, share her stories, speak of her at the table, Bring her laughter and humor back into the house. Love her more than ever. Love her more deeply than ever. Keep your, her life in your hearts, in your minds, and on your tongues. Every story you tell of her is a prayer. Every laugh is a prayer. Every tear is a prayer. And never forget the things that she stood for that motivated her to work in fields that cared for others. One message on the memory Lord said, such a bright light has gone out. No, not at all. It has been passed to others to carry. Her bright light now becomes your light. No greater praise can given about a person's life than they have written their legacy in the hearts of others. I said one place to go in this moment was to the memory of Elizabeth's life. The second place to go, and even more importantly, is to our faith in Jesus Christ. Every time Jesus encountered death in the scriptures, in that synagogue official's daughter, in the widow at name, in Lazarus's tomb, every time Jesus encountered death, there followed resurrection as the promise to us that God has created us for an eternal life with him. One of the lines in that second reading from Titus talked about devotion to a good life. It is that devotion to a good life that leads to the second life, the eternal life with the God who creates us. And so ultimately, in the darkness and saddest days that are to come, 
Find your peace not only in Elizabeth's memories and life, in her dedication to righteousness and justice and compassion, but find your peace and consolation in believing that she lives in the house of the Father. When Pope Emeritus Benedict was preaching at the death of a friend, he put these words in the mouth of Jesus. Jesus never said this, but they are cause for reflection. He has Jesus saying to Elizabeth, wherever you fall in death, I will be there for you. Where no one can accompany you and you can take nothing with you, I wait for you to turn darkness into light. Elizabeth has passed her earthly light to all of us, but now she lives in a greater light, the light of God's fullness in love for her. Amen. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. In baptism, Elizabeth received the light of Christ Scatter the darkness now, and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Our sister Elizabeth was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love, and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. The family and friends of Elizabeth seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain, and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Elizabeth, strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pause to add our own personal intentions in silence. For these quiet prayers of our hearts, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And I invite those who are bringing up the gifts of bread and wine to follow the cross to the offertory table.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at our hands for the for praise the and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Elizabeth. We beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. If all Catholics would please kneel, and those who are our guests of other faiths may either kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to re reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain the inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Elizabeth and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Joseph Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Elizabeth, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. stand. Over and over again in scripture, brothers and sisters, Jesus teaches us how much God loves us and seeks to walk with us in our journey through life. Confident in Jesus' promise that God is with us to lift us from this grief to give us his peace 
and his consolation, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now as a sign of our mutual comfort and support, let us exchange with one another an acceptable sign of peace. I need this. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Jesus the Lord, our life, our resurrection, and our peace. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In these days of uh, COVID, nothing is the same, not even the communion. So we ask, first of all, in coming to communion, those who are, that you keep the social distancing, try to keep that distance and not be one on top of the other. Secondly, the direction is for, for safety's sake for everyone to receive in the hand. And so we ask you to put your hand out. The priest or minister will say the body of Christ, you say amen who put a, the host in your hand and then take a step to the side and only then remove your mask, receive the host, put the mask back up and then go back to your places. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. I 
one of you has to be with me in this 